Hey friend, I've got a good and bad news for you. But first, imagine a game, an FPS, immersive as Metro Exodus, with rich gunplay of Call of Duty and Freedom of Dishonored. A game offering a minimalistic interface of Dead Space, as well as the pacing and realism of RDR2. Are you done? Good, cause the good news is, you don't have to imagine that game. Cause it already exists, and has been on the market for over a decade. Far Cry 2, ladies and gentlemen, that's the game in question. Get you anything you need. Diamonds, drugs, guns, you name it. And the bad news is, Ubisoft keeps going above and beyond to never release such a masterpiece ever again. When we shoot our enemies, we want them to die in the streets. Not recover in a hospital with a pretty nurse by their side. A masterpiece that could restore the reputation of this company to the good old times when it wasn't afraid of taking risks. In today's video, I'll try to answer the question why Far Cry needs to go back to Africa. Okay, but before we talk about Far Cry 2 and Return to Africa, first we have to understand two things. What Far Cry really is and why Far Cry has lost its way. Oh yes, and don't worry, there won't be any major spoilers in this video. Are you ready? Good. Let's start with the second question. I'm big fan of this franchise. I've played every Far Cry since 2008 and finished every one of them except Primal. Recently, I finally reached the end of Far Cry 6 and, well... I must agree with many other YouTubers. Far Cry has lost its way. Far Cry 6 tries so hard to be every trending game on the market and fails miserably at imitating them. It tries to be like Just Cause with numerous and vivid explosions, but Just Cause gives players many tools like the grappler to experiment with physics and destruction. Whereas in Far Cry 6 it's all reduced to shoot some red barrel or press the button to exterminate everything with Supremo once in a while. There are boss fights. Here's a look at one of the boss fights. That was it. Far Cry 6 also tries to be a stealth game, but peaks from the original Angry Birds have more advanced AI than enemies and NPCs in this game. Yo, my son. Got us. I'm not drunk. I calculated my alcohol. I'm good to drive. You sure? I'm fine. So, here's why you're really here. I just got a... Uh, okay. Not to mention that there are almost no consequences in the ninja playstyle. Hmm, some enemy found the body? Ha, huh, happens all the time. No need to raise an alarm. A bullet from a sniper rifle landed centimeters from the foe's face? Well, it didn't kill me, so reporting that would be rude toward that sniper. Far Cry 6 also wants to be like Borderlands and Destiny. But doesn't understand that introducing health bars completely changes shooting mechanics. Not to mention that bullet sponges don't go well with the semi-realistic setting of Far Cry. I played with hot off and armor piercing rounds and that thing was still very noticeable. Borderlands and Destiny have onions and stylized graphics, so shooting multiple times in their faces doesn't stand out so much. Gunplay in these titles was created with a longer time to kill in mind, so to make shooting bullet sponges more pleasant, each body shot often results in the explosion of colorful sparks and high damage numbers. 
Additionally, in Destiny, we have four rechargeable abilities. So, if shooting wears down, there is always some depth, some distraction and satisfaction from using them in the right moment, rather than just simply firing at the aforementioned sponges for the entire eternity. It rings every hour, señor presidente. Hola, fascista. I recognize that voice. Let me ask you a question. When I am dead and Yara is burning, what exactly is your plan? Hold hands, sing songs around the fire? Sure, I know just the song. And finally, Far Cry 6 likewise tries to tell an ambitious story of guerrillas and how revolution divorces its own children. But even here, something is lacking, and that thing is consistency. In one mission, you're getting tortured. The guerrillas came every day under charge. Oh. <coughs> yeah. ah! Crime by crime, piece by piece. Then five minutes pass, and everyone forgets that this even happened, with no implications or consequences at all. Other times, the game tries to be more impactful and show the player that Castillo's regime isn't simply black and white and that overthrowing him could throw Yara into poverty once again. Your country's seven years behind the rest of us. If you just let Castillo and me do our thing, you people would go from third world to first, like that. Another few minutes pass and this entire theme gets thrown out, out of the window and is never mentioned ever again. Instead, we get sent to another side of the map just to obtain some stupid dinosaur mask. The game introduces new characters at every step, but develops almost none of them. I'm good with animals. I think that Ubisoft got a bit lost with the definition of the word cool. It just looks like that according to them, if you won't put into the game pseudo Gen Z humor every 5 minutes, players will simply die out of boredom. Which, of course, couldn't be further from the truth. Just look at John Wick or Atomic Blonde. Despite the more mature tone of narration, these movies are cool and yet they don't have cringy scenes every 5 minutes. You know what they say, less is more. In Far Cry 6, there's simply no consistency. For example, the tone of the narration in GTA 5 stays almost the same throughout the entire game. In Horrors, on the other hand, the tension of the story is consistently increasing. In Alien Isolation, for example, at the beginning protagonist has to hide and study the threat from a safe distance so that by the end of the game she can go full Rambo with a flamethrower. But in Far Cry 6, story feels like a bumpy road. And I'm not saying that this game has a bad story, of course. It's just its pacing and so much of wasted potential to be something more. Children so are close. Sweatshops build our phones and Bibiro saves millions of lives. Do you think that those lives care where it comes from? When Yara becomes paradise, when I give my Vibiro to America, my methods, your questions, no one will care. Whew. Okay, time to move on to the second question. What is Far Cry? On the cover of the first game, we see a protagonist emerging from the water and the vast jungle behind him. Okay, and now I'm gonna ask you to think about what this image and title Far Cry bring to your mind. Cause when I hear the phrase Far Cry, the first thing I imagine is a loud scream coming from somewhere deep in the wilderness. Let's change the scale a bit. You're watching TV at night, sitting in a comfy chair, surfing through channels. And suddenly, you stop at some lesser known TV station with the headline breaking news. You see children crying 
and hear gunshots in the background. Reporter announces that war has just begun thousands of miles away in some far world country, the name of which you've never even heard of. And yet, people live there in this land forgotten by most of the world. And you sit there in your comfy chair looking at those people with tears and screams on their faces. That's also cry from afar. Far Cry. The OG Far Cry games, the roots of this franchise, were telling stories about some forgotten lands torn by conflict and hostile environments. And you, some guy or girl from abroad who got used to that comfy chair, lands in the middle of this madness. But you aren't Terminator, you aren't a superhero, you don't have a backpack that turns you into a one-man army, you only have two things left, some rusty guns and the will to improvise, to use this hostile environment to your advantage by starting fires, gaining high ground, preparing ambushes, or hitting where hurts the most, like in the ammo box of an outpost. That's the heart of Far Cry, what this franchise was, and what it should be. Why Africa? People need weapons all over the world. Why here? Why my home? Every place is somebody's home, pal. But it doesn't stop people from going to war. I don't start wars, I didn't start this one. It seems like it's your fellow Africans that want each other dead. Besides, why should I give a shit about your home? Why should anyone? You want me to go somewhere else? So there's someone's home you don't give a shit about? What if it was your home? War is my home. Far Cry 6 was a missed opportunity to create an endless cycle of interesting settings for the upcoming entries in the franchise. You see, New Dawn takes place after the nuclear war. Ubisoft should have expanded on this idea. The war could have resulted in the creation of new fictional countries in different parts of the world, each with its own unique dictator to overthrow, an infinite supply of new maps and villains for the next 10 games. Eyes open now! Ass. You fuck kidding me? Instead, Far Cry 6 treats war as if it never happened. So, I think we can safely assume that all seven continents are safe and sound. And, as I mentioned above, Far Cry needs to find its own identity again. And the best way to do that is by going back to its roots. The same crisis happened to Call of Duty a few years ago, but Activision eventually returned to the modern warfare era, a decision that turned out to be both critical and commercial success. So, where should Far Cry return to? The action of the first game took place on a tropical island, but this setting was just present in Far Cry 6. Devs could also pursue something new, take inspiration from Sicario for example, and set the action in some cartel-controlled location, resembling Mexico or Colombia. But wait, this setting also recently appeared in Ghost Recon Wildlands, and so I came to the conclusion that Africa would be a perfect place for a fresh start. A huge chunk of fans fondly remember Far Cry 2 and hopes that it will eventually get its own remake. But let's be honest, we live in the era of remakes, why not make something not only nostalgic but also new? And Africa is the perfect place to do that exact thing. Do you ever choose sides in a conflict? I did it once, it was a bad idea. Cut my profits in half, almost got me killed. Never again. You sell to both sides. You can up-level the field, stabilize the market, draw out the conflict and make more money. A big sale to one side doesn't generate repeat business. Both the APR and the UFLL are using my weapons. Now they're in detente. Both sides are stockpiling. Less violence, more spending. It's perfect. But it's anarchy. Thousands are dead. Hundreds of thousands are displaced. If I pick sides, few will be displaced, but more will be dead. And I would probably be one of them. How do you stop a man who has the power to turn a nation into a graveyard? They'll send someone. Okay, let's briefly recap Far Cry 2. 
the player takes on the role of a mercenary that has been hired to assassinate an arms dealer known as Jackal, who, on a side note, is the protagonist of the first Far Cry from 2004. However, the player's mission is complicated by the fact that they have contracted malaria, which requires them to regularly take meds throughout the game. And so we work for both sides of the conflict to find and kill Jokal. Far Cry 2 offers an interesting insight into the core of the conflict. We are hired to kill Jokal in hopes of shortening the war. But to get to him, we have to fight for UFLL and APR. And by this, we are actually prolonging the war. I'm not going to go into details to avoid spoilers, but I highly recommend Leadhead's video essay Far Cry 2 and the Death of Ego. It explains that Far Cry 2 is about the Earth and how little it cares for this civil war that a bunch of humans are fighting somewhere on top of it. In Far Cry 2, Guns Gem covers are easily destroyed. Rockets ricochet from the ground, and even the blow from the launcher can ignite the entire savanna. But this environment isn't hostile only toward the protagonist. After a few hours, players will learn how to use surroundings to their own advantage. A mobile, when damaged, will shoot out its contents in all directions, killing and wounding enemies in close proximity. Flare guns can set the grass on fire, and missiles can be shot off in mid-flight. I'll tell you what's sick. People in the UK, in the US, fucking Canada, Sweden, they pay their taxes and some remote piloted drone fires a missile into a public market to hit some warlord. Yeah, so maybe war doesn't happen for another six months and the price of their gluten-free sorghum bread stays low. It's not sick to arm people, it's sick to bump off their crooks and dictators in protection of our interests and then call it international justice. These people don't have remote piloted drones got in their interest 10,000 miles away. They don't have a war machine paid for with taxes. Where I am, they usually don't even have a fucking government. The drone is the oppressor. The gluten-free sorghum bread is the oppressor. The AK-47 is the great equalizer. I empower these people. So, how this return to Africa should look like, you might ask. Well... I actually asked ChatGPT about the same thing, and this is what I got. Quote, Game is set in a fictional African country that has been ravaged by a civil war between two rival factions, the government-backed army and a rebel group seeking to overthrow the corrupt regime. The player takes on the role of a former soldier turned mercenary who is hired by one of the factions to help turn the tide of the war in their favor as the player navigates the conflict. They begin to uncover a larger conspiracy involving a powerful corporation that has been secretly funding the war in order to exploit the country's natural resources. As they dig deeper, the player must choose whether to continue fighting for their employer or switch sides to take down the corrupt corporation and end the conflict for good. Throughout the game, the player must navigate treacherous terrain, fend off dangerous wildlife, and battle heavily armed enemy forces in intense first-person shooter combat. Along the way, they'll also encounter a cast of colorful characters, each with their own motivations and agendas. Ultimately, the player's choices will determine the fate of the country and its people. Will they be a ruthless mercenary, only interested in their own survival and profit, or will they be a hero? Fighting for justice and the greater good, the choice is yours in Far Cry 7, Africa Unleashed. Not gonna lie, it actually sounds pretty good, especially the first part. Africa and the Middle East are regions in which war is, unfortunately, almost always present somewhere. It's also not uncommon that foreign influences are one of the reasons behind these conflicts. Oil companies, for example. You see, Far Cry 2 came out in an interesting time frame. War in Iraq and Afghanistan, I mean. Most of us followed these events from our comfy homes, watching them on our TVs as they unfold. And yet, this game was an interesting commentary about those times. It sent us on a mission to a country that most of us only know about from the news. 
the country that unfortunately is only getting mentioned when another war starts within it. The decade had come and gone, another one starts and the same thing happens. War in Ukraine, Syria, rising tensions between East and West. I think we all could use another Far Cry 2 to reflect on our modern times. You can't break a man the way you break a dog or a horse. The harder you beat a man, the taller he stands. To break a man's will, to break his spirit, you have to break his mind. Men have this idea that we can fight with dignity, that there's a proper way to kill someone. It's absurd, it's anesthetic. We needed to endure the bloody horror of murder. You must destroy that idea. Show him what a messy, terrible thing it is to kill a man. And then show him that you relish in it. Shoot the wound, then execute the wounded. Burn them. Take them in close combat. Destroy the preconceptions of what a man is, and you become their personal monster. When they fear you, you become stronger. You become better. But let's never forget, it's a display. It's a posture, like a lion's roar or a gorilla thumping at his chest. If you lose yourself in the display, if you succumb to the horror, then you become the monster. You become reduced. Not more than a man, but less. And it can be fatal. Far Cry 3 was a masterpiece. And still is. The world and gameplay ideally fit into the narrative about being tempted by a jungle and falling into madness. These elements work great in Far Cry 3, but they don't work particularly well with modern Far Cry's, which try to tell a story on a much bigger scale. Currently, we reside within the ninth console generation, but it feels like Ubisoft is still stuck in the era of PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. Just play Red Dead Redemption 2, Star Citizen, Metro Exodus, Skyrim, Pathologic 2. In the distant steppes lays a forgotten town, where life is slow and things are bleak. Or Elden Ring, and you will know what I'm talking about. In these games, adventure awaits at every corner. You never know what will happen. You explore every corner because every corner is worth exploring. Whenever in modern Ubisoft games, you just go to a marker on the map, shoot some people, press the interaction button, then go to another marker and repeat the whole process again. Sadly, it just feels like in recent years, Ubisoft has almost stopped improving their games. Did I ever tell you what the definition of insanity is? Insanity is doing the exact same fucking thing over and over again, expecting shit to change. That is crazy. They just change some elements only for the sake of change. In Far Cry 2, the gameplay offered much more freedom. Quests weren't scripted that much, so we had many ways to accomplish our objectives. Instead of sidearm and three weapons of our choice, we had four slots. One for a sidearm, one for a primary weapon, so MP5 with suppressor or Dragoon of SVD for example. And finally, one slot for a special weapon, which means rocket launcher, LKM or flamethrower. And don't forget, one for a machete. Because of this, we were often changing our loadouts in unlocked hideouts to better suit the mission objectives. In modern Far Cry's, we practically don't do that anymore. Full auto gun, sniper rifle, and bow or rocket launcher, and we're basically unstoppable. That's why I think that going back to the system from Far Cry 2 would be the best choice. Not to mention diamonds, probably one of the best collectibles in video game history. I hope I don't have to collect any fucking flags. In Far Cry 2, map wasn't located in the pose menu, but in our hands. Literally the map was a physical object in the game world. In one hand we were holding the piece of paper and in other GPS. 
When we were close to the hidden Daemon briefcase, the LED on the GPS started flushing faster the closer we got. Daemon served as an in-game currency for which we could buy new weapons and upgrades for our character. And finally our bodies, NPCs that the players could find, recruit and do missions for them. In return, they could sometimes rescue us in the critical moment. But they weren't immortal and if we didn't have enough syringes to save them, the only thing we could do was to shorten their suffering. To summarize, there aren't many games set in Africa, so swimming on the boat through colorfully illuminated slums or flying on a paraglider toward the setting sun, man, that game would be awesome. I hope that Ubisoft still remembers about Far Cry 2 and will eventually apply a course correction for this franchise. Before I end this video, I would like to say thank you if you've reached this part. I also would like to ask you for a favor and like this video if you've enjoyed it. This is a relatively new channel and that would greatly help in gaining more exposure. If you want more videos like this, also hit subscribe button and don't forget to write in the comments your thoughts about the future of Far Cry. Once again, thanks for watching, see you next time.